Okay, hi. So, the, the last time we, uh, we conclude the lesson by introducing the Cantor function, okay? So, just to recall you the, the main property. Okay, we define f is defined between the closed interval 0, 1 into 0, 1. Okay, the Cantor function. Okay, f is continuous. Is increasing, <laughs> uh, non decreasing actually. Okay, it's continuous because it's, uh, we saw that it's a uniform limit of, uh, of continuous function, okay? We saw that f is zero is zero and f of one is one and we saw that it is, by definition, it is constant on the interval, on the open interval that we remove in the construction of the Cantor function, okay? Of the Cantor set, sorry. Okay. Okay, now, by means of the Cantor function, we can construct an homeomorphism between 0, 1 and 0, 2. Okay, so let us consider H, we define it by H, the following function between 0, 1 and 0, 2. such that 2x associate x plus f of x, where f is the counter function, okay? Okay, so we immediately saw that h is continuous because it's the sum of the two continuous function is strictly increasing, okay? So h is continuous, uh, strictly Increasing and so, in other words, H is an homomorphism between zero one and zero two. Okay. Okay, so um, somehow the final purpose of, of this part, first part of the lecture would be to see that uh, mm, the notion of measure is not preserved under, um, under homeomorphism, okay? So we will see that uh, um, H can map a set of measure, a measure zero into a set which has a positive measure. So, the notion of measure is not preserved under homeomorphism. We need, we will need to require more in order to, okay, to preserve the measure. Okay, so consider, uh, um, okay, consider K is the counter set is the counter set. Okay, then we have that the complement of the Cantor set is the union of this uh, opening interval that we removed in, in the construction, okay? So it's the union, just to recall you, of this joint interval. Open if you want, open. Okay. Okay, we, we know that. As I recall you before, we know that F, the counter function, 
is constant on each such an interval. Okay. Okay, so by construction. counter function f is constant on each i n okay and uh, so what about we have that this means that for any x in this open this joint interval i n we have that h of x our homeomorphism what looks like as x plus some constant c n okay of course the constant depends on the interval okay so what is the image under h of i n okay so we have that h i n would be I n plus C n and we have that the measure of H I n is the measure of I n okay because we saw that the measure is invariant under under translation Okay. Okay, just let me uh, call this equality star. Okay. Okay, we know that. Okay, since H is an homeomorphism, and so it's it's one to one. We have that. We have that the image of the union of this joint uh, um, set will be the will be the, the sum, the union of the image of, of the set. Okay, we have that. Um, the union, the image of the union of this joint interval is the the union of the image images of the of the interval, okay? And of the images and 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 this in the remain is joint, okay? And they and they remain. joint okay so you have that um, okay call it uh, um, call this complement a so you have that h of a is equal to the union countable union of h of i n okay Okay, now we want to compute the measure of H of A. Okay. So we have that the measure of H of A is, we use this, is the measure of the union of H I N, which is equal because we saw that they are disjoint, it's the sum of the measure of H I N and okay this is because of this remark 
and this is because of star. Okay, so this is equal to the sum of the measure of I n uh, which is equal to the measure of A that we saw uh, on Tuesday that this is equal to 1, okay? Okay, so again we, we use the fact that H is a 1 to 1, is an homomorphism, so we have that Okay, again, so since H is an homomorphism, okay, the complement okay, the complement of the image is the image of the complement. OK, so in particular, we have that. We consider uh, H of K, where, where K is uh, the Cantor set. This will be equal to 0, 2 minus h of a. OK, so we compute h of k. The measure of h of k is equal to 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. And so we saw that, finally, what we prove is that h map a set of measure zero, which is the counter set, okay, into a set of measure one. So basically this is to say that the notion of measure of a bag measure in this way is not is not topologically invariant, OK? So it's not preserved under uh, homeomorphism. OK. Okay, now we start with another argument, with a new argument. OK, so the, the next argument will be the measurable function, OK? OK, can you see? OK, so before introducing the uh, the definition, I would like just to, to anticipate you that when we will uh, introduce uh, the notion of Lebesgue integral, we will have to deal with a set of uh, um, so Lebesgue integral for a function f, for instance. We will have to deal with, uh, for instance, you have some function f, uh, put uh, no matter where. Like this, 
So we will have to deal with uh, um, this kind of set. Okay. And uh, so somehow we would like to, to know, to, to classify, to characterize the function f for which this kind of set is measurable, okay? Otherwise, it won't make sense uh, to, to compute the measure of this kind of set. Okay, so, so from this somehow remark, we define what is a measurable function, okay? So consider a set A, which is a, subs a subset of, of R, of course, and, and the function f defined on a which values in in the extended r so which is the extended the set of the extended real number so you have r if you want union minus infinity and plus infinity so we will say that this function f is measurable if two facts are fulfilled so is measurable If, okay, we'll write here. If the domain A is a measurable set, A is measurable. I, if you have that for any alpha in R, the set F larger than alpha is, is measurable, okay? So two, uh, somehow, there are two requirements. Okay, so from this uh, you can uh, you can see that if this set is measurable, also there are many other sets that we can infer are measurable. So we we see the following proposition. So let f be defined from a to r be a measurable function. And, uh, okay, so, of course, it's already included in the definition, but just to stress that we already know that A is in there. Okay. Hmm? Uh, I mean, uh, okay. Let me. This is the set, uh, okay, the set X of, of the X in A, in the domain, such that F of X is... Uh, larger than alpha, okay? Okay, in the following, for short, I, I will denote this set f larger than alpha, okay? Just to be, but... Well, okay. Mm, okay, so we have that the following, if you start from this, we have that the following uh, statement are equivalent. Okay. Um, Okay, then the following statement are equivalent. Okay, so we have I for any alpha in R. Uh, okay, we start by this. We have that, okay, x in A such that f of x is larger than alpha is measurable. Okay, then we have 2i. <coughs> 
okay so again for any alpha in R the set of the X in A such that f of x is larger or equal to alpha is measurable and then we consider the other inequalities 3i for any alpha in r the set of x in a such that f of x is less strictly less than alpha it's measurable and um, finally for, for any alpha in R, the set of the X in A, such that F of X is less or equal than alpha, is, is measurable, okay? Okay, so okay, we start by proving that I implies 4, which is the easy case, it's very easy somehow. Because just you, you consider the complement and you're done. No, I, I don't get your, your, in the definition you mean? In the, the proposition? So we start by uh, f be a measure of a whole function, which means that it satisfies these two. It's a function from a to the extended real number. And by definition, we know that a is measurable. I've read it again, but it was, uh, was not, no, it was not. No, no, but we are under the hypothesis that f is measurable. Ah, I mean, uh, the, 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 this is uh, already, um, okay, I understand what you mean. Yeah, 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 okay, we can remove it, okay. Or, or yeah, yeah, this is already included. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know what you mean. Okay, let be, um, okay, let be a function. Yeah, okay, thank you, yeah, sure. So let be a function. Okay, we require this because if we don't require that it's measurable, we have to require, so yeah, yeah, sure, I agree with you. Then the following statement are equivalent. Okay, that's, okay, so if you read this with the first one, mean that it is measurable. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so we start by proving that I implies uh, the last one. Okay, so we can just see uh, the set, um, okay, x in A such that f of x is uh, less or equal than alpha as, as A minus the set x in A as f of x is larger than alpha. Okay, so uh, we know that this is measurable and the complement uh, is measurable as well. Okay, then, uh, okay, for i is implies i is, see, you can argue similarly, no, it's equivalent, so um, by, by exercise if you want. And then we prove, okay, 2i implies 3i again. So you just have that. f of x less than alpha are a minus f of x larger than alpha, okay. And then 3i implies 2i, it's uh, similar, okay, so you know that it's measurable, so the complement is, must also be measurable. And so it remains to prove, to prove, that I, for instance, I implies 2I. Okay, we can, 
All right, this set here has uh, the intersection, for instance. So you have x in A such that f of x is larger or equal than alpha, has the countable intersection of x in A such that f of x is strictly larger than alpha minus 1 over n, okay? Okay, so we know that these are measurable, and the countable intersection of measurable set is still measurable. Okay, so this concludes the proof. Okay, so... Okay, now we want to deal with the level set of the of measurable function. Okay. And we prove the following. Okay, so let f be from i to r a measurable function okay okay then we have that for any <coughs> alpha belonging to the the extended real line so it might be also plus or minus infinity we have that um, okay the level set of f So the point in A such that f of x is equal to alpha is also measurable. <coughs> okay, we divide two cases, the cases in which alpha uh, belongs to, to R, so this is finite. So you can see it as an in intersection of two former sets, okay, so you have that in this case, x in A, such that f of x is equal to alpha, you can see it has uh, uh, the x in A, such that f of x is larger or equal than alpha, intersected the set x in A, such that f of x is less, than e less or equal than alpha, okay? Okay, then the case when alpha is, uh, for instance, uh, uh, plus infinity. You need to, uh, to do countable intersection. So if alpha, for instance, equal to uh, plus infinity, so you get the point x in A such that f of x is equal to plus infinity are the intersection over n of the set x in A such that f of x is uh, uh, larger or equal than n, okay? And uh, uh, for minus infinity you intersect with the same, so you have f of x less or equal than minus n. Okay, so this concludes the proof. Okay, now, okay, we give a definition of, uh, of measurable function, but we would like also to somehow to see some example, no, of, of, how, of how a measurable function look like. Okay.
Okay, so for instance, think about um, a continuous function, okay? So, example, some example of measurable functions. Okay, so I'll consider f from a to uh, r a in m the domain is a measurable set and assume that f is uh, is continuous okay okay then we will see that f is uh, measurable Do you see? Do you know why? The, the pre-image of the set like alpha plus infinity is an open set, so the pre-image is open. So you take the intersection with A, uh, it would be open in the relative topology, so you, take, you have actually the intersection of two measurable sets, which is measurable. Okay, so just you have that f of x larger than alpha. So we want to establish that it, that it is um, a measurable set. You can see it as the pre-image under f of uh, alpha uh, plus infinity. Okay. And this is open. This is open. So the pre-image is open. Uh, is an open set in the relative topology and uh, so open set of, of A if you want which means that there exists a new op and a set U open of R such that this set can be viewed as U intersected A, U is open, so it's a, it's a Borel set, and we saw that Borel set are measurable set, and this is, uh, uh, this is measurable, so we get that also uh, this set is measurable. Okay, so this is uh, one example of measurable function. Then you can construct also another example. You start by a set A in R and uh, okay I don't know if you know uh, what is the characteristic function of A is a function from R to 0 1 okay you can take for instance to, to the full R so this is called the uh, characteristic uh, function of uh, the set A and it is defined in this way so you have that key A, A of x is equal to 1 if uh, x is in A or 0 otherwise so actually it, it takes two values Okay, so we, we can show that this kind of function is measurable if and not only if the set A is measurable, okay? So we have that then. Um, it's a kind of characterization. A is measurable if and only if q of a is measurable as a function, okay? q of a is measurable. Is measurable. Okay, let's prove this.
Okay, we start by assuming that uh, Q of A is measurable. So if Q of A is measurable, Okay, we have that uh, um, we can express the set A as the set for which Q of A is equal to 1, so it's a level set, okay? Uh, okay, th this is always holds, it doesn't. So uh, if K is measurable, we have that. A coincide with uh, the set for which and for which uh, x in R, if you want, q of a of x is equal to 1. So this is um, a level set of a measurable function. So this means that, that it is measurable, OK? This is a level set of a measurable function. Okay, the converse, assume that A is measurable, and we want to, uh, to see that Q of A is measurable, so we have to, um, to study the, <coughs> the set of the type uh, Q of A is uh, larger than some alpha. <coughs> Okay, so okay, we start by just observing that the domain I just erased, but the domain of Q of A was uh, R, because this is the, f the first thing that we have to check is that the domain is measurable. So the domain of Q of A is R, and R is measurable, okay? Okay, then we fix. Uh, we pick some alpha in R and take some alpha in R. And so let us study this kind of set, the x in R, such that q of a of x is larger than alpha. Okay, then we have that this set would be, there are actually three, somehow three cases, three possibilities. Okay, this would be the empty set if alpha is larger or equal than one, okay, because it's never, uh, it's never greater than one, okay. Then it would be, it would coincide with A if uh, Alpha is uh, uh, less than one and greater or equal than zero. Okay, and would be R if the remaining ca case if alpha is um, larger. No, sorry, is less than than zero. Okay, it's negative. Okay. Any case, we 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 end up with the measurable set. In any case, in any case, hmm? excuse me. I mean, if you put here a number uh, which is less than zero, uh, this is always, uh, it's always true, okay? Okay, yeah, because I have the strict inequality, okay? Okay, in any case, uh, we uh, end up, in any case means either empty set A or R, no. we end up with, uh, with a measurable set. Okay.
Okay, now we, um, we study the operation between measurable functions, the sum, the product, and something like this. Okay, so. Okay, so let uh, we take two function f and g from uh, uh, a to r. Um, okay, for the moment we just uh, assume that uh, the codomain is just r, okay, not the extended real line. line. So then we will uh, we will study uh, also the general case. Uh, okay, r measurable function. And let's see a constant point in R. Okay, then we have that also the following the function mm, okay. F plus C uh, uh, C um, times F F plus G f minus g and f times g are, uh, are also measurable, okay? Okay, so if we perform this operation, we still remain in the class of measurable function. Okay, proof. So we start by, okay, F plus C. Okay, this is proof. Um, F plus C, this is, uh, uh, okay, F plus C is uh, larger than alpha, pick some alpha in R. Okay, this is, of course, is equal than F larger than alpha minus C. So we are done, okay. Uh, then we have C times F. Okay, we. Uh, okay, C times F larger than alpha. We can distinguish uh, three cases according to the sign of C. Okay, for instance, if C is positive, then we have that C times F larger than alpha is equal to F larger than alpha divided by C. Uh, if C is equal to zero, then you have that zero is larger than alpha. So also in this case, you have to distinguish uh, some cases. Of course, uh, the result will depend on, on, on how alpha looks like, okay? So it would be uh, all A, actually no, you have three, uh, two cases, of course. So this is all A if uh, um, if alpha is less than zero and will be the empty set if uh, alpha is larger or equal than zero. In any case, you, yeah. If, uh, if c equals zero, zero yeah. uh, the function is continuous. Yes. Yes, but you don't know if f is continuous. Ah, a zero. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see. You can see also in that way. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. Just let me finish in this way. Okay. C is less than zero. Okay. So you observe that if the function is, if C is zero, the function is uh, constantly equal to zero. So it is continuous, and we 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 prove before that a continuous function is measurable. Okay. Okay, this is zero less than, no, sorry, C times F 
is uh, uh, okay, larger than alpha. So in this case, the inequality. Okay, in this case, the inequality is reverse. So you have that f is less than alpha divided by c. Okay, and then we have to study the case. Uh, okay, f plus g. Uh, okay, the case f plus g. Okay, we have to, uh, to work a bit. Okay, so consider f plus g. Okay, we okay, again we pick some alpha in R. We have that f plus g is larger than alpha and call this set B, for instance, okay? Okay. Um, so now, since to, to deal with these cases, we will need to, to, to use a countable operation between set. So, and to uh, somehow, uh, to use countable operation, we have to use the fact that the rational number are dense in, uh, in alpha, in, uh, in R, okay? Okay, so you have that if, just observe that if f of x plus g of x is, uh, uh, okay, is larger than alpha, okay, then this is, this is trivial, you have that f of x uh, actually, uh, okay, l let me deal with the other side, with the other, I mean, it's the same, just, it's just for, for the sake of convenience, but of course it's the same. So f of x is less than alpha minus g of x. Okay. Okay, then, as I told you, we observe that, then, since q is dense in R, we have that this is equivalent <coughs> then uh, there exists uh, there exists a rational number R such that uh, f of x is uh, uh, less than R um, and less than alpha minus g of x, okay? So you have the strict inequality, so here you have room to put a rational number, okay? Okay, I call, uh, call this inequality R, this property R, and so What we want to use is the fact that uh, if x belong, if x belongs to b, then uh, x satisfies satisfies this uh, satisfies this r, and also the the converse is true. Okay. Okay, this is to say that we can characterize uh, this set B. Okay, this means that that we can characterize the set. The set B, so the set where f plus g is less than alpha, has the countable union over uh, the rational number <coughs> of these two, the countable union of an intersection of x, um, okay, x such that f of x is. Uh, is less than R uh, intersected with the set of the x where f of x, uh, no, where, um, 
sorry, alpha, g of x, yeah. g of x is larger, no, g of, it's a, it's a minus, so g of x is smaller than alpha minus uh, r, okay? Okay, so this is, uh, these are nice set because this is measurable. This is also measurable because we know that f and g are measurable, so the intersection are <coughs> also measurable. And now we are dealing just with countable uh, union, so all this stuff will be, will be measurable, okay? Okay, and then... Uh, okay, f minus g, the fact that f minus g is measurable just comes from combining uh, this step here and the fact that if you multiply for a constant, uh, you still obtain a measurable function. So just to briefly of that f minus g, you can see it has, okay, f plus minus 1 times g. So we are done. Okay, so what about f times g? Okay, we, we want to express this uh, in, um, we want to express this in this way, 1 over 2 of <coughs> f plus g square minus uh, uh, f square minus g square. Okay, but we still don't know if this kind of, if you, if you take the power 2 of a measurable function is measurable. So we, if we prove this, we, we are done because then we already proved that f plus g is measurable. Okay, so consider, consider for instance, uh, f square. So what about f square? Okay, and consider the set f square larger than uh, alpha. Okay, if you have that, if alpha is larger or equal than zero, f square larger than alpha is, uh, can be split as the union of two of this, this set here, larger than uh, the square root of alpha union f of x less this. And okay, these are two are measurable, okay? So, so the other case, I wrote it here, if alpha is less than zero, this is always true, okay? We have that f square larger than alpha is equal to, to the domain. In any case, we know that the domain is measurable. Okay, so we, once that you, we check that if you take the, the power two of a measurable function, you still obtain a measurable function, then we are sure that uh, while doing this operation, we remain uh, within the class of measurable functions. So we saw that also the, the product of two measurable functions uh, is a measurable function. So we, I think we, we span all the cases. Okay. Okay, and then we would like to see uh, what can we say about this operation if the codomain of our measurable function is uh, the full extended real number, okay? Okay. Okay. What about if if we have f and g uh, from a to r bar? Okay. So means r union minus infinity and plus infinity. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we start by this case. So when you have S times F, um, okay, somehow this case, the nasty case, is when uh, with, uh, with C equal to 1, and so if you want the, the interesting case, and f is equal to plus and minus infinity. Okay, in this case, there is a convention in measure theory. So in this case, in this case, uh, in measure theory, to assign this value, 0 times plus infinity is equal to 0, which is equal to 0 times minus infinity. OK. OK, of course, it doesn't hold in, uh, I mean, uh, in the limit, so it, it, it doesn't mean that does it mean this does not mean that if you have uh, if you have a sequence, if you have two sequences, if you have uh, sequences, so it's a CN which tends to zero. No, and fn, which tends to uh, plus infinity. In general, you, ca you cannot say that cn tends to 0. So this is not true. So this is just a convention. We have the precise values, OK? OK, so this is the way to compute c times <coughs> f. OK, what about uh, when, you, uh, when you have to to consider the sum between two measurable functions in the extended real line. OK, so for instance, OK, you have f plus g, OK. So again, we, we use a convention. So, okay, we use we use this convention. Okay, so we have that f plus g um, is equal to some constant c fixed. When you have the, the, the four which are indeterminated, for instance, when you end up with uh, this, uh, for instance, you have minus infinity plus infinity or the reverse, OK? So you put it and see. Of course, when you have, I don't know, plus infinity plus plus infinity, you, you put it as a plus infinity, which is no. Uh, otherwise, you, yeah, as I said, you put just f plus g, okay, otherwise. Okay, so what about, uh, so we can dec decompose a, the, the, the domain of, of, of this function, as the union of, of two, of two sets. So somehow there are finite number of possibilities for. So you have A, you see A, the domain, as A, I call it A finite union A infinity. 
Okay, so A finite is defined in this way. It's the finite union of, of this set. No, actually, it's an intersection, okay, but is this set? Is the x in A such that both functions are finite, okay? G of x in R. And you can see this has the x in A such that f of x uh, is in R, intersection x in A such that g of x belongs to R. Okay, so why this, for instance, uh, this is a measurable, uh, this is a measurable set? Because you in turn you can, you can express this as the complement of the set where f of x is equal infinity. Here I mean plus and minus infinity, the complement of the set. And we saw that it is a measurable set, intersection of x in a of g equal to infinity complement. OK, this is measurable as well. So the set a finite is measurable. Uh, what about the set a infinity? We will then we will uh, define it in as follows. So you have all somehow the other cases. You have f is equal to plus infinity. G is equal to plus infinity. Or call this a prime infinity if you want. A1, actually. Uh, union, f is equal to plus infinity. G is equal to minus infinity. Union, f is equal to minus infinity. G is equal to uh, plus infinity. There are eight sets. So then union, f equal to minus infinity and g equal to minus infinity union <coughs> okay you have other f equal to plus infinity g in r no and maybe you understand how the things are going on actually there are eight set then you have f equal to minus infinity g in r union f in r and g equal to plus infinity union um, f in r and g equal to minus infinity so there are eight sets and we call them i don't know a2 infinity a3 infinity a4 infinity a5 infinity, A6 infinity, and A7 infinity, and A8 infinity. Okay, so when we have to say if our set uh, of the type F plus G larger than alpha uh, is, is whether it's measurable or not, we have just uh, to consider a finite, a finite number of, of sets. So when you, you, when you fix alpha in R and you, and you study this set, F plus G is larger than alpha, you can split this in, in such a way. Okay. These are, of course, X in A. x in a finite uh, uh, f plus g larger than alpha union okay union x in a infinity f plus g larger than alpha okay okay for this case we can deal as before when when uh, where 
when we are in the finite case, in this case, we can deal we can deal as before. So when actually we are in this case with R, okay? We we can argue as before. More than argue, we can directly apply what we proved before, okay? When we, when on the contrary, we are here, we have just to, uh, to compare uh, Okay, so we should have something like this. We have that our, our function f plus g takes at most uh, a finite set of values. Actually, we have a in a1 plus infinity, it is infinity. Then we use the convention in, in a2, infinity is equal to c, a3, infinity is equal to, to c again. A4 infinity should be equal to minus infinity. And then A5 infinity is equal to, okay, plus infinity. Then you have A6 infinity, which is equal to minus infinity. A7 infinity is equal to plus infinity. And A infinity is equal to minus infinity. So basically what I want to tell you is that you have, the co you have to compare C and alpha just for a finite number of cases, okay? So for instance, for the cases A1 infinity, you have that infinity is larger than alpha, so this is true. And then you continue as A2 infinity. You have to say if C is larger than alpha, okay? And so either is true, so you have all the set, or is not true, so you have the empty set. In any case, you have to compare with eight cases, and you have uh, a, so we have a finite number of cases, and you always end up, when you have to say, where this is defined, you end up with a, with a, with a measurable set, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, please go, go. And, uh, okay, so you can do the same. I don't repeat the, uh, this, uh, this argument because it, it's very long, it's nothing too deep, but for f times g, okay? Ah, sorry. Go, go, go. No, no, you can go. I will uh, will continue for 10 minutes because, uh, but you can go. Okay, if when, when, you, when you consider f uh, and g um, r, and you have to, to, to deal with the, with the product, I mean, you, you can argue similarly. So you have zero if, use the conventional, if f times g is of the form, for instance, zero times plus minus infinity, and then will be plus minus infinity if f and g are equal to plus or minus infinity. 
and then okay this is the easy case f plus f times g if f is less than infinity and g is less than infinity okay okay and also in this case you have you can define a finite as the case when uh, this case and you can define okay you can see a as the union of a finite union a0 infinity and this a0 infinity somehow collect uh, these, two, these first two cases I just start to write some of this but then you, you understand how it goes on is f is equal to uh, plus infinity and g is equal to plus infinity union f is equal to plus infinity and g is minus infinity then you have the reverse no? and then union union then you have the cases in which uh, f is equal to zero and g is equal to plus infinity union uh, okay f is equal to zero g is equal to minus infinity and you continue it as you have again eight cases so when you have to compare uh, alpha no the test uh, the, 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 the test values uh, you have to compare alpha just with a finite with a finite with a, with a finite numbers of values and you always end up with a measurable set okay so you argue the argument is completely analogous of with what we done uh, for uh, for the um, for the sum okay it's very long so i don't want to uh, to repeat it again okay so now we have uh, some minutes left Who of you has to go to the, some of you who has to, ah, no, okay. Okay. May I raise here? Okay, so a remark. So, do you think that um, there exists no measurable function? How can you construct a function which is not measurable? Excuse me. The, the, you use the non measurable set. So you, you have to use, uh, I mean, the, the way is to use the non measurable set that we construct, okay? But, uh, but then, how could you define? As for, we saw that. Uh, a characterization about characteristic function of uh, of set okay you 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 have you have to combine uh, the fact that there is a t a set t which is not measurable the, the, the function f from t to 1 t to 1 yeah or or rather you, you can use it as the characteristic function of of the, of the non measurable set okay Okay, this is okay. This is not measurable. Okay. Okay, this is an example non-measurable function, and 
And uh, okay, what can we, okay, we in the last minute we can prove this proposition? Okay, so let f from a to r bar uh, measurable. Then F is measurable if and only if I hear that for any uh, B in R open. B belongs to M and to uh, F, uh, sorry, uh, the pre image of plus infinity and pre image of minus infinity are measurable. Excuse me? Ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's a function. Okay. Okay, so we prove. Okay, I think we here we have then to to require a in the fact that a is in m. Okay, actually somehow this is um, related with with the, for instance she, she I don't remember your name um, Soheila Soheila before she uh, suggest this. Uh, um, this example has a non-measurable function, which is called the, the, the constant function defined on t with the, is, is right, which is completely correct. But I mean, here the, the fact that, for instance, f is not measurable is also because the domain is not measurable. But it, but this is correct. So these are two functions. This is why we when we want just to check the second part, so the, the part concerning the uh, the level set, if you want, we have still to, to require this, okay? Okay, so let's see this implication. So we assume that F is measurable. Okay, we saw that if B is, we start by B, an open set, we saw that we can express this as the countable union of this joint open set of the type, uh, type AI, BI. Okay, these are this joint uh, open, open interval, sorry, open interval. Okay, so if you look at the pre-image of B, this is the union of S minus 1 of AI, BI. And then we have that because the pre-image uh, preserve, uh, the pre-image of this joint set pres preserve um, the, the, the countable union, okay? The pre-image. Preserve. Yeah. What is the F minus? Oh, no, yes. Yes, sorry, it's the pre image, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
for serve countable union okay okay so we can you understand how it goes on you have the this pre image is can be seen as the intersection of of these two uh, set and so you have that the pre image of B is uh, okay so is the countable union of uh, uh, okay of this set ah, my, it's very F less than B I. Okay, and everything is measurable, okay? And then, okay, what about the pre image of uh, this uh, of plus infinity? This is the intersection of f is larger than n and again everything is measurable okay okay now we we deal with the vice versa uh, okay we want to prove that f is measurable if these two are satisfied so we um, so we check we pick some alpha in r and and we check uh, if this set is measurable, so but how we can express this set? We can express it as the pre-image of uh, alpha uh, plus infinity union the pre-image of uh, um, of plus infinity. Okay, okay, but we 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 assume that these are uh, both measurable. And so we are sure that also this set here is measurable. And so we, this concludes. This concludes the proof. Okay. So I think that for today we can we can stop here.